science fans and welcome to Sciencia. Our topic for today is the Philippines as the center of marine biodiversity. The Philippines has been topping a lot of lists and not all of them are good and some are just downright depressing. But there is one thing that we are at the center of that I am particularly grateful for. An expedition by the Old Dominion University and the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History found evidence that the Philippines is the center of the center of marine biodiversity. Wait, what? How did this happen? The Indo-Malay Philippines Archipelago, or the IMPA system, You're finally awake. IMPA! The IMPA has long since been established as one of the centers of biodiversity in the world. There are four general sets of hypotheses as to why this is, but there is a common theme running across these predictions about the level of biodiversity in the IMPA. During the Pleistocene epoch around 2.58 to 0.012 million years ago, large shelf areas of the Impa were exposed and therefore experienced a series of local marine extinctions. Due to these Pleistocene exposed areas, only the Philippine Islands and a region called the Wallacea were the only remaining habitats left within the Impa that marine organisms could survive in. Wallacea is a term not frequently used by marine geographers, but it is a convenient term used to refer to the area of the island groups of Sulawesi, Molucas, Halmahira, and the Lesser Sunda Islands. In the area of overlap hypothesis, the Impa is one of those few locations where marine organisms would live together in an overlapping manner due to the drying up of various oceans during the Pleistocene epoch. But the more likely convergence points for all those animals from the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean would be the Wallacea and not the Philippine Islands. The Impa is also an overlap point where organisms across four different tectonic plates could raft into due to their overlapping areas within the eastern side of the Wallacea. The juncture zone in the eastern Wallacea is considered the primary overlap area, and it is where active collisions between the Philippine, Pacific, Indian, and Australian plates were occurring. The area of accumulation hypothesis, which is also known as the vortex hypothesis on the other hand, suggests that most of the speciation events occurred in remote Pacific islands. They then accumulated within the Impa due to prevailing ocean currents at the time. The middle to late Cenozoic Pacific equatorial currents primarily flow towards elements of the Wallacea as well. So, we have another hypothesis pointing towards the Wallacea as the center of marine biodiversity. The area of refuge hypothesis is a little similar to the area of accumulation hypothesis, except that its main focus is that the Impa is the most extensive shallow tropical marine habitats present in the planet. Because you see, larger areas generally support more species than smaller areas, and that tropical low-latitude habitats have greater available energy to support life than cooler latitudes. With this hypothesis, the most logical conclusion would be that Malaysia would be the center of marine biodiversity because within the Impa, it would have the most extensive marine shallow water habitats available. No! And finally, the center of origin hypothesis focuses on allopatric speciation events. Allopatric speciation Fancy terminology aside, what I'm referring to is a type of evolution that was best or most famously exemplified by the Galapagos finches as described by Charles Darwin. Allopatric speciation occurs when a single species becomes geographically separated and each group evolves new and distinctive traits. In this hypothesis, both the Wallacea 
and the Philippine Islands are potential origins. Philippines number one! A combination of the place to see sea level decline together with tectonic activities could have isolated seas within the Philippine Islands and the Wallacea as well that would have led to varied evolution in existing marine species. Diving expeditions at a massive scale and global information systems technology showed that the species' richness was nowhere near as high as it was within the Philippine Islands, and that the heart of this biodiversity hotspot was the Verde Island Passage in Batangas. Close to 200 new and endemic species have been discovered within the Verde Island Passage within the past five years alone. But if you're afraid of the water and you're not a biologist, why should you care for biodiversity? Biodiversity in general refers to the different types of organisms living in the same place. Having high biodiversity is important for society since they provide services including food security, feed for livestock, raw materials for medicine, building materials from coral rock and sand, and natural defenses against hazards such as coastal erosion and inundation. But if you don't believe me, maybe you'll believe the renowned marine biologist and coral and coastal communities advocate, Dr. Al Likwanan. A reef takes thousands of years to form. Okay. And if you want to say now, we're here to save the reef, good. Okay. Saving the reef means protecting the organisms that built the reef. Pero if you're here to say, oh, I'm going to build a reef, okay, good luck. I hope you live a few thousand years uh, or more than that because it's a really slow process. These structures are very valuable. Uh, I hope you all know that. Pero here's a piece of information you should remember, especially this summer. A square meter of healthy reef produces one to five kilograms of white sand per year. Okay, one to five kilograms of white sand. But what is white sand anyway? It's just ground up coral skeleton. Okay, and if you have a healthy reef, there's lots of coral producing skeleton and eventually that skeleton will erode and you get white sand. Okay. So, you want to support tourism, you want to protect our islands, you let the reef uh, grow. It's very important in terms of organisms that yield substances that produce medicine. Uh, for example, the snail eats fish. Snail that eats fish, paano niya nahuhuli yun? Okay. Because of simple proteins that they used to immobilize the fish. And those proteins were synthesized into painkillers by Filipino scientists. Reef support 25% of our fisheries production. Reef support a lot of other organisms. And if that's not important to you, perhaps this is important. A fairly new study, 2018, Total economic value of reefs in terms of ecosystem services, $4 billion a year. Considering all that, the identification of the Philippines being the center of the center of marine biodiversity is both exciting and troubling. The Philippines experiences heightened levels of threat to marine environments. And because of all of these problems, the Philippines is in fact the most highly threatened center of endemism. Our high levels of marine biodiversity is both a gift and an extreme responsibility. I hope you were able to learn something from this short video on why the Philippines is the center of the center of marine biodiversity. If you want to learn more about marine biology and corals, please visit the Brother Alfred Shields FSC Ocean Research Center website which is also known as DLSU Shore. This is a team led by Dr. Al Likwanan who has been traveling all over the Philippines to assess the status of our wonderful coral reefs. I hope you can give this video a thumbs up also and subscribe to our channel. 
Thank you very much and see you around!